kittens i missed y'all how have y'all week been going mine has been going good over here wrapping up this book that's why i look like cleo the psychic but i digress what's up this is my all t all shade love and hip-hop new york season six episode 12 which is the season finale review so let's get straight into my review okay so we start off this episode with remy freaking out because her wedding venue is not how it wanted nothing was set up everything was fucked up and she herself is um a party planner so she knows a lot about planning parties and she just didn't look right to her you know she was wondering where her ice skating rink was it wasn't set up yet and i'm like this bitch is actually gonna have an ice skating rink at her wedding these bitches about to be out here ice skating like they tying your heart or some shit but okay girl so um her sisters are there at the wedding but one of them just act like she do not want to be there and that was the sister named ray monique yeah uh so ray monique uh basically uh feels like Remy wasn't there for her when she got locked up. Well, girl, she can't be there for you if she's um, in solitary confinement. I, mean, I don't know how much you want her to be there for you when she's locked up, trying to keep her booty hole clink clinked. But um, she was 16 years old and she just felt like, you know, Remy wasn't there for her when she needed her most because Remy basically raised her. So she felt some type of way and Remy still feels some type of way about the way her little sister came at her and talked to her and the scathing email that she sent her while she was in jail. So, you know, Remy keeps a hose a, a grudge. You know, that bitch stay mad about everything. So, um, Remy sends Pap a video of her dressed like the Red Devil from Scream Queens. <laughs> And she gave him this little sexy one-two step or whatever. And it was in front of his our son and all his friends and stuff like that. But he enjoyed the, uh, the video or whatever. So then they switched back to Ray Monique. And, you know, she got an attitude. She don't really want to be there. And, uh, you know, Remy confronts her about what she said to her while she was locked up or whatever. And I was like, well... You're supposed to be the older sister here. You're older than this young lady. It was obvious that you just said you raised her. She looked at you like not only her sister, but her mother, like a mother figure to her. So she was disappointed in you. She didn't have anybody else she felt like that at that age. You were the person that she looked up to. She acted out. She, you know, showed her frustration, her disappointment by via hateful words. What a 16-year-old would fucking do. Why are you still mad about this shit? Damn near 10 years later with your grown fuck ass. You should know how teenagers act. You have a fucking teenager, your fucking self. Remy just is childish to me in certain aspects. I like her, but this show really showed me her childish, petty side. And so her and the sister, you know, hash things out. They cry a little bit and they make up or whatever. But besides all that shit. Let's get on Remy Mama for naming these bitches they name. So Remy real name is Reminisce. Reminisce on the love we had. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. You know we had it all. You and I. That is not me singing for real, so don't even get it twisted. Um, so her name is Reminisce. Then the other sister's name is Ray Monique. Clearly, her mama named her after her daddy and some other bitch. You know how hood bitches love to put a nigga name mixed with a bitch name together to make their child name. And then the other sister's name was Ray Misha. Don't do that to your kids. Please do not try to mix your name and your nigga name together to create a name. Stop it. So the wedding planner can't locate the pastor and Remy is about to shit a new one. So she asks Ra Ali to go talk to Pap about it. Pap was like, don't worry because he has hired the pastor that married him and Remy while they was in jail or whatever. But his main concern is the fact that he don't like that Ra Ali puts Remy in situations that could get her ass fucking locked up again. So Ra says that, you know what, she's always been there for Remy. She shows up for Remy and that she loves Remy and that she would never do anything to jeopardize her freedom. Her and Pat make up and everything's good. So uh, Peter, Mandy, Crisco, and Rich are all dressed in black, dressed in all back like an omen. And they, um, outside the wedding, they all look really nice. I liked all their suits and stuff. I really like Crisco's. He looked really nice. He looked the best. Then Peter's. I did not like Mandy's look at all with that hat turned to the back. Like, nigga. So, they all talking and shit. And Courtney bring her thought ass outside. She wants to see somebody in her uh, little Instagram freak dress. So, she go out there and do a twirl for the niggas or whatever. Showing that little fat, bald ass of hers. 
And uh, she asks who uh, they out there trying to get pregnant. You know, the niggas laugh. And so Chris going to take the opportunity to try to get on her. You know, because anytime he sees somebody that look a little right, he going to take the opportunity to shoot his shot. No, I don't blame him. So, but Cardi ain't hurt for the bullshit. She like, I don't fuck with light skin ass niggas. And he's, you know, just tried to fuck with Mariah Lynn. I ain't about that life. But I could tell a little bit low key in her eyes. She was feeling his little light bulb head looking ass. So... Peter tells the guys that he wants to protect me and they tell him that, you know, he needs to tell Amina about what his plans are and guess what? Who's walking up? Amina. The producers gave her a cue to walk her ass on out there. So the guys disperse. Her and Peter start having a conversation about uh, her coming to the wedding. She thanks him for inviting her. You know, she feels like she's one up Tara because she got it to be his plus one at Remy and Pap's wedding. So um, they both agreed that they were in a great space before Tara revealed that she was pregnant. How great of a space they could have been in, I don't know. Uh, so he says that Tara's baby would be his last baby and he's going to have a sex to me and this bitch freaks the fuck out. Her main concern is that Tara will be the last bitch to have his kids. She's his wife. She should have had the opportunity. Um, Tara is the wrong person to have been pregnant by him. I'm like, neither one of you bitches is the right person to be carrying around that sperm in your vag. That sperm will burn a fucking hole in your vagina. Who wants that semen up in them? I don't want that nut up in me. No God, no sir. She's so worried about Tara being the last bitch to have his baby. She over there about to pull her weed tracks out. I'm like, this bitch is so fucking dumb. She's more worried about Tara than she is the dumb ass shit that her husband keep on putting her the fuck through. They both trying to one up each other and they both losing in the end. And I'm like, oh my God. So she freaking out and she crying and talking about some, you know, she's done for the 1,000th time. She wanted a divorce. She done with him. <laughs> and the, the tears that don't never the fuck come out and her, her Kim Kardashian cry baby. <laughs> like, girl, get somewhere out. Girl, I just can't out with her. So um, it's time for the wedding. And Jace walks, um, no, Jace is going to walk, walk Remy down the aisle. And I, he's a cute little boy, but his hair was terrible. She should have made the little boy cut his hair and her fucking red. His hair was fucking ridiculous. Put up in that little ragged ass ponytail with that damn, uh, real band looking like he stay on 151st Street in Harlem or <laughs> whatever the fuck. So, um, um. Did y'all notice they had little silver painted people and shit, voguing and shit? And I'm like, what in the fuck are we at the uh, Wizard of Oz? And like, what the fuck? Like, what in the hell is all these little silver people? So then Pap walk out in his suit. And he got on a black fedora, looking so fucking ghetto. Like I hated that fucking hat he had on. Um, and I, that that just let me know right there with the silver people and this nigga having on a fedora. And this is about to be a ghetto ass wedding. It was a hood wedding, honey. And then it got even more ghetto when Keisha Cole walked her rat ass down to the out. Let me leave Keisha Cole alone. Because that used to be my bitch back in the day. Her first album was a shit. After that, it went downhill. Um, so then Remy comes out and she looks absolutely stunning. I loved her dress. It was a little old looking for me. I wasn't expecting for her to go so traditional with her dress. But it was cute nonetheless. Um... I did tear up. I was crying my eyes. I even know it was the hoodest, ghettoest wedding I've ever seen in my life. So her son was even crying. And their altar, though, was absolutely stunning with the branches and the candles and the white flowers. The, I think there was orchids or something in the background. It was fucking stunning, their altar. That was gorgeous. They passed. It was ghetto as hell. He looked like he was the pastor at a new North Side Baptist church somewhere <laughs> in New York. Um, <clears throat> then... um. They they said they vows or whatever. After that, they went to the wedding reception. They actually had a fucking ice rink up in the fucking wedding reception with white bitches skating. I'm like, these bitches and hired white bitches to be out here on the skating rink. What in the hell is going on? I felt like I was at the Winter fucking Olympics. So at the reception, Pap had on a fucking mini rhinestone bow tie, my nigga, with a shiny like leathery pleathery suit jacket and I was pissed the fuck off I was like who dressed this nigga one of RuPaul's drag race contestants he looked so fucking gay as hell with that little mini little bow tie I was like nigga where the fuck are you going so then at the end you know they do that little recap of uh where everybody's at now BBOD is still together trying to make it work trying to be the next JJ fat so Cardi B got a makeup line a bunch of phone charges and shit coming out <laughs> Yeah. everybody need a charger so um mariah lynn mama had her baby and she named her iceland it was a cute name i love that name iceland i might use it in the book one day she's still out here trying to rap and pop her pussy for a real nigga 
Young B shot a music video. She's still out here trying to be the new Foxy Brown. And I'm here for it. Ra is still over there working on her little polyester dot rainbow dresses and shit. And still over there scamming bitches, writing bad checks. Peter got a vasectomy. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. There is a Jesus. Look at Blue Ivy once she do it. Um, him and Rich are opening up some little restaurant out there in New York or whatever. They partnered up with some little Albanian looking man or whatever. Some old illegal shit they got going on over there. Because you know, ain't now one of them niggas out of coin for real. Tara is uh, having a little boy who she's naming Gunner. I really like that name. That was a really cute name. Peter Guns, Gunner. Fabulous name. Dumb decision. Um, Amina is still over there singing in coffee shops. She, you can find her at your local Starbucks. Go, Wendy. You might see Amina there strumming on the guitar. Then Yandy and Mandy, they still over there trying to be the 06 Bonnie and Clyde. Me and my girlfriend doing 95 as we ride. <laughs> that was funny. Um, they celebrated Skylar's uh, first birthday before that nigga got locked up. And that was the end. I can't wait for the um, reunion next week. And I'm so ready for Love & Hip Hop Atlanta. I'm here for my bitch Jocelyn. So that was my review. I give the season finale. I give the season finale an A because it made me cry because of the wedding. Other than that, it was pretty decent for what it was. More fuckery, more foolery. Can't wait to see if Amina's really pregnant by this nigga again. Before he had that vasectomy. Is she really knocked up? Which I believe she is. So thank you all for watching. Please leave your comments on tonight's uh, season finale down in the comments section. Please make sure to like and subscribe to all of my new subscribers. Thank you so much for watching my videos. Welcome to my fuckery and my channel. I have new videos up every week. And oh, thank you guys so much. I love you so much. I finally reached over 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. So I'm so excited. I'm so happy. I have over a million views now because of you all watching me. So thank you. 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 I can't say thank you enough. I worked hard over these past three years to get these 10,000 subscribers. This is all hard work. Ain't no box subscribers over here, honey. Everything is real. So thank you so much. I cannot wait for June so we can start back uh, with my power reviews. Oh my God. So just thank you all. I love you all so, 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 so much. I have new makeup tutorials and everything coming as soon as I finish this book. So thank you all so much for working with me. All new content and everything this year. Be on the lookout for my next novel, Heartless, which is the sequel to my last book, Emotionally Unavailable. If you do not know, I'm a best-selling author. Google me. My name is Keisha Irvin with the E-E-R-V-I-N. Pow, pow. Yes. So thank you all so much for watching this video. Love you very much. And have a great and wonderful, safe, joyous week.